So that's going to be especially concentrated in the uh, in the corners, maybe a little bit on the pistons, but it's pretty simple. I'm just going to add a new layer, dirt, sludge, and instead of using a smart material for this, this one's going to be entirely done by hand. And the way that this works is that on my new layer, I will pick a color, something kind of like dirt. Yeah, something like that. Maybe a little less saturated. And then I can also pick a roughness and a metalness. So if I were to just start painting right now, you can see it has a roughness and a metalness. There's no metalness right now, which is what we want, but we also want it to have a very high roughness for dirt. So like like that, maybe all the way up to 100%. And it's also adding a bit of depth. Now, I don't really want it to add a lot of depth because when you paint with these uh, alphas, you see that doesn't, that's a little strong. So I'll reduce my depth down to maybe 5%. Maybe even that's a little too strong, maybe just 2%. Yeah, like that. So we can start to add on a lot of dirt and scratches that have built up on this over time. But another cool feature you can use, if you want to add a lot of dirt really quickly, is if we go to the brush options, first thing we can edit is the rotation amplitude. If I bring that all the way up to 360, then you'll see that the alpha is applied at a random rotation. Then I can also do radius variation. So then it will also be applied at random sizes. And then I can jitter the hue and jitter the brightness. So if I do jitter brightness and jitter hue, then let me increase that a little bit more then you'll see that every single time the alpha gets applied, the brightness and color changes slightly. So this can help you very quickly add a lot of randomness. Maybe I'll reduce my opacity too. So now I can add on a lot of multi-shaded dirt very quickly using whatever alpha I want. Now, granted, some of these options you'll need to redo every single time you switch alphas, but it does save you a lot of time instead of having to constantly go in and change colors. So I'll pick some alphas I know I like, like this one, for instance. It does a really good job of making scratches. Basically, you can just uh, go nuts with this. There we go, that's what I wanted. Yeah, some very real looking scratches going on right there. I also technically tend to uh, want to do as much work as I can with one alpha before switching to another, just saves time. So I'm trying to get to as many places as I can where it makes sense for me to use this particular alpha before I switch to some other alpha. Now something else I'm going to do is, in addition to the dirt, it wasn't just dirt, it was also sludge, 
which I interpret as being a darker color and having a very low roughness value, something that, that kind of shines. So a very low roughness and a high opacity. So now you see I can make it look like there's something on there that's kind of, uh, that's kind of wet. This is especially true for something like lubricant that they might put onto the pistons. And you know, if some leaks like that, you know, maybe it makes sense. Maybe some of it did drop down from there. You never know. Just whatever looks good. There we go. So just little touches like that can help bring it all together. And it's important to think about things like that, sort of what is this equipment used for? What has it been through? You know, is this operated in a very clean environment? Is it a very dirty environment? As you can tell, this is probably not used in a clean environment. But uh, but it may, there may be other questions you need to ask yourself, like is this operated in a dangerous environment? Will, there, will it have sustained a lot of intentional damage or just general wear and tear? Have people been hurt while using this equipment? Do you want to put something like a dried blood stain on it? In my case, I'm not going to do that, but those are things you need to think about. We're going to put on, then I go to the default, there's actually some good ones in here too, like this pretty splattery one is really nice, looks like a lot of paint drops. So I'll put that, maybe some sludge leaked out of the pistons here and then just kind of fell onto the arm. Same thing maybe up here. So then something else that you can do is I'm going to add some scratches into the normal map. So I can add another layer and I'll call this one normal adjustments. And I'll go back to my cracks and wrinkles here. Pick like say this one. And I'm not going to paint color or gloss. I'm only going to paint into the normal map. So as you can see, I can make some pretty dramatic differences there. So maybe down here where it's supposed to be grabbing things. Let me make the intensity of that a bit lower. Maybe where it was supposed to be grabbing something, maybe it missed and then it slid up against something it wasn't supposed to. 